roll your own call center with AWS Connect. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Peter Buswell for Dr. Voip. And in this uh, video, which will probably be several videos, the subject will be how to build a call center using AWS Connect. The first video will uh, be an overview and we will quickly build out a call center. We'll do it in a way that uh, should be digestible by people who are comfortable with call center technology and are not necessarily uh, AWS uh, uh, folks. But as we uh, progress and we add layers of sophistication to the initial call center, it would probably help if you had experience with AWS in general, uh, typically at the level of an AWS uh, certified solutions architect, AWS developer, or a sysops admin. Uh, those are the kinds of uh, uh, background experiences you would probably need to really apply uh, the, the more sophisticated aspects of AWS Connect that we'll be looking at in this video. So we're going to build out a basic uh, inbound call center using uh, AWS Connect. And then uh, as we add levels of sophistication, for example, uh, initially we'll have a, an incoming call to a touch tone call tree, an interactive voice response in which the caller will press one for sales, two for support, uh, three to check uh, a ticket status. And uh, on top of that, we will build out uh, Lex, the automatic speech recognition engine. Uh, and then ultimately, we'll do a data dip using Lambda. We'll look at some screen pop options and ultimately will integrate with the Salesforce popular CRM. So why would you uh, want to build out your own call center? Well, typically hard, hard dollar costs are one of the primary reasons. So if you have a uh, call center, whether it's a customer premise or a cloud-based call center, you have some cost for equipment, you have costs for implementation, you have costs for maintenance, you have a variety of costs that when you use AWS Connect, many of those costs disappear. You're not gonna buy any servers, you're not going to install any equipment, this is all gonna be done in the cloud and it's all gonna be uh, cost you based on usage and usage alone. There are no desktop licenses and you know, you're not gonna have to pay a license fee for a supervisor and a license fee for an agent. And you're not gonna have to license the various features that you use often in a cloud-based solution. You've got your cost per agent and then uh, cost for additional features. So none of those costs will apply. In AWS, you're going to be charged only for usage. The second uh, area is customization. Now, if you're using a cloud-based uh, solution from many of the popular uh, providers in the marketplace, they have to create a product that is appropriate for their install base. And they can't run around making special changes just for you uh, because any changes they make are going to affect their entire install base. Using AWS Connect, you can add and customize the a call center to meet your exacting needs. And that's a big advantage. Uh, you'll find that you can access uh, technologies like speech recognition, text to speech, build chat bots, even go completely serverless in the cloud using Lambda. And uh, you don't have to be con concerned about the fact that you're going to impact all the other folks because you're the only folks, right? So it's your call center. And lastly, uh, time. You can spin up an AW. In fact, here's a challenge. We will build you a 25 agent inbound call center solution with uh, three uh, queues 
and have you operational uh, in an hour. And uh, that's our challenge. We can do that, and we do it all the time. Um, let's take a look at a typical uh, cloud-based vendor. Now, I have worked, uh, if not all, I have worked with most of the top vendors out there, and they basically have the same kind of uh, pricing model. You're going to pay for an agent desktop license. And then on top of that, if you want any features, for example, uh, you want email routing or you want recording or you want to integrate with CRM, each of those are going to have an incremental charge on top of your uh, agent license. And ultimately, you're going to pay for expanded storage. You're going to pay for things like encryption. There are just uh, a variety of additional charges. And you're going to end up going to about $200 per agent just for the license before you even answer any inbound phone call. The typical AWS Connect price um, has about three components. So let's take a situation in which you've got call center built out in uh, uh, an AWS region. Uh, it's answered on an AWS uh, soft phone and the call lasts seven minutes. So you're going to pay a usage charge uh, based on the duration of the call. So in a seven minute call, the charge is about uh, just under two cents a minute. It's gonna cost you 12 cents to make, uh, to process that call. You're gonna pay for the fact that it came in on an 800 number, and you're gonna pay usage on, the, uh, on that uh, toll free call. So for a seven-minute inbound phone call, you didn't buy servers, you didn't have to install anything, and you paid a whole 27 cents for that phone call. Now, if you looked at uh, this and you said, if I had uh, 50 agents in my call center, uh, I'd be spending $10,000 a month before I even answered the first call. And if I took that same 10 grand, I could buy about a half a million inbound phone calls uh, if I'm using AWS Connect. So there's a tremendous uh, financial cost advantage to using AWS Connect. Um, the components that are, are going to make up the AWS Connect, uh, if you've been involved with AWS, you know the concept of an instance uh, this is a, a server, for example. You spin up an EC2 instance of type Windows, type Linux, whatever. It's called an instance. We're going to have several services that we're going to use. These services include uh, Lex, which will be the speech recognition engine, and Lambda, which is a, a, a function as a service, basically uh, enables us to launch a database lookup. We don't care about the server, don't even know where the server is. It's serverless. We launch Lambda, uh, do our database dip, bring the information back and continue with our routing. S3 is a storage, a bucket uh, storage, where we're going to store things like our recordings and our metrics. Uh, CCP is the contact control panel. This is actually a little soft phone, and you'll see that shortly, that the agents will use to manage calls. There is something called contact trace records. Uh, to me, there, as an old telecom guy, there are uh, station message detail records, uh, unique GUID for each uh, record, unique endpoint, and they're stored, sortable, and used to generate reports or custom reports, uh, and they're saved in your S3 instance. You'll have a dashboard where we'll log in and do administration, uh, programming, and also where we'll get our metrics. So uh, instances have certain limitations, but um, in the case of AWS, it's often very possible to call them up and say, hey, I, I need more than 10 instances per account. I need more than... Uh, um, I need more than 500 users, et cetera. But there are a set of uh, uh, limits within the contact center that uh, uh, we'll be paying attention to. 
some of the services that we will use to uh, support this uh, uh, build out. Definitely S3, Lambda, and Lex. But other features, you know, you, you can integrate with your Active Directory system for single sign-on. You can have uh, uh, um, CloudWatch uh, uh, keep track and report. There's just a variety of services. Again, if you're not familiar with AWS, don't worry about this right now. But as we add sophistication later on, you're going to want to learn more about these different AWS services. Here's the contact control panel. So when you uh, uh, create your call center and you have your agents, uh, they're going to have this little uh, soft phone. So you plug your USB headset into your laptop uh, and uh, log in and you get this uh, uh, contact control panel. And you'll see it, uh, it changes uh, based on the status. You know, incoming call, I get connected, I complete the task, I do after call work. This is all done in the control panel. The Connect dashboard looks something like this. Uh, we'll log in. I'll give you a tour of the uh, Connect dashboard. And this is where the administrator will log in generally um, to uh, program, uh, to create call flows, to create users. Call flows are uh, the meat and potatoes of the AWS Connect system. It's a, uh, if anybody has worked with uh, scripting in UCCX or Shortel uh, or any of the other popular IVR definition tools, um, you drag these various steps out to a pallet, get them connected up, uh, and uh, uh, define the various, uh, you know, for example, play prompt. You're going to dictate which prompt to play, et cetera. And we'll take a look at this in great detail. So uh, let's get started and let's uh, take a look at building out a call center. Before we actually log in to the console and start the build out, let's, uh, let's review the basic call flow will be implementing. I would point out that if you have an Amazon book buying account, you can use that same credential to log into AWS. And if you're going to follow along and build out a call center with us, uh, you may want to take advantage of the fact that uh, there is a free tier, something Amazon does uh, quite frequently throughout their services, uh, and give you some time to play with it before they start billing you. Uh, there is a free tier associated with the call center, and you'll get uh, 90 minutes a month free. You'll get a free DID number. You'll get 30 minutes of uh, uh, outbound calling, 30 minutes of inbound calling uh, per month during the free tier. Uh, so it's an opportunity for you to follow along, build this out, and uh, uh, see what we're going to do. Again, uh, though we eventually will add Lex, and we will eventually add DataDip, uh, in this initial build out, we're going to start simple. So the basic configuration here Yes, uh, we'll go through the portal. I'll give you a menu tour. Uh, I'll show you how to uh, create your uh, alias, uh, add a number, uh, create the endpoint ID. We'll set up users, uh, administrators, agents, supervisors, maybe create some wrap codes, ready codes, and we'll set up a basic call flow um, this call flow we're going to have, uh, just keep it simple, we're going to have sales, uh, support, operations. I create uh, a separate uh, call flow for callbacks. So I'll, I'll explain that when we get there. We're going to create prompts. We'll set up our operating hours. And we'll create uh, the various queues we will need. And the build out steps itself when you log into the portal aws has like a 
uh, connect the dots for beginners here and they'll show you um, how to get a number, how to set up hours, how to create queues, create prompts, create flows. In fact, when you log in, you'll see there, there are quite a few flows um, predefined that you can either use or customize. And, and then I suggest you create users. Now, it's been my experience and uh, uh, typically I don't like to start coding anything until I have a, a real uh, a flow chart of how this uh, call center is supposed to work. I have often told clients that uh, we want to understand the management reports that you want to get out of the system uh, because often this will dictate how we implement a particular call flow. But I can tell you that there's a, it, you can't really uh, um, connect or start building out uh, uh, um, your cues, for example, until you've thought out the call flow and you can't uh, uh, create steps in your queues, for example, uh, options uh, at various times through your call flow. If you haven't sketched that out first, uh, you'll want to create your hours. You'll design flows. Uh, you'll create prompts. Then we'll create the queues, create the profiles, create users, uh, set up the various status, ready codes, after work, etc., and we'll get a number. And this is um, uh, um, just uh, the way we would approach it, and I think you'll find it useful. The initial uh, call flow logic will uh, have a phone number that when you call it, the first thing we're going to do is check the hours um, and determine whether the call center is open or closed. And if it's uh, open, if we're on hours, we will be routed to a call tree uh, in which they will be offered the option of uh, dial one for sales, two for support, three to check the status of a ticket. And after hours, uh, we'll, we'll give them a prompt to let them know they reached us after hours, and then we'll send them to a voicemail system. A quick note here, AWS does not currently support uh, voicemail. And so uh, you will end up um, uh, transferring it offsite to your favorite voicemail box. The queues that we'll set up will be sales, support, uh, ticket status. And I like to have a separate queue for callback. So if someone's in queue and they bail out and want uh, a callback, uh, I like to send that call to a, you know, win back team or a, a group, a queue that's uh, specifically a callback. We'll take a look at estimated wait time or we'll offer some callback options and then we'll queue the call. So let's uh, log in and take a look at how we will actually build this call center. 